Okay, welcome everybody to this um, webinar that is entitled Homeopathy for Challenging Times. I know that uh, this election season has been a difficult one for many people. It's brought up lots of emotions and um, c concerns and I would say really we're seeing uh, kind of an unprecedented kind of conflicts uh, and feelings coming out from people and we all need some help I think on all sides of the spectrum so um, I know that homeopathy has been just incredibly helpful in all kinds of traumatic situations over its 200 year history, including epidemics, wars, um, all kinds of physical and emotional trauma. So it's good to really get a sense of what homeopathy can do and how uh, some of the remedies that have been used over this period of time uh, in these kinds of conditions. So that's kind of what I'll be reviewing here is some of the most important remedies that may be helpful for people at this time. And also I'm going to talk a few about a few herbs that can be used by everybody and can help as well. So what are the advantages of working with homeopathy? Well, homeopathy is an energy medicine, probably more similar to acupuncture or Reiki than it is to uh, mainstream allopathic medicine in that it's working with our energy field and our energy system. And because of that, it doesn't have any side effects. Uh, there's no way to poison yourself with a homeopathic remedy or, or have a biochemical side effect from homeopathy. And at the same time, the way that it works is it helps your vital force or your body's energy system to come into a better state of balance, uh, which can involve sometimes some emotional release. Um, and it's all part of what we would call a healing process. So it's important to understand that what homeopathy does is initiate a healing process in your body's energy field, which, like I said, can involve a release of bad feelings or uh, negative feelings or pent-up emotions and that kind of thing. But in general, what it does is it's bringing everything back into balance. Um, and it tends to do it in a pretty gentle way. Uh, especially if the right potencies are used, and we will be talking about potencies in a little while. So it's safe, it's effective, and it is gentle. So here are some of the remedies that uh, are helpful during traumatic times and in traumatic events. Uh, the first remedy we often think of for emotional trauma is aconite, because aconite is uh, when you have a, is a remedy for sudden fright. We say, when in fright, take aconite. Um, so everything, anything from an earthquake um, to um, having a car accident, um, but anytime you have like a sudden fright and you feel very shaken afterwards, um, that is aconite. So anybody who's the victim of any kind of violence um, often would need aconite right in the beginning because of the kind of shocking fright that happens. Um, um, makes me think a little bit of hate crimes or any kind of um, physical or emotional unexpected violence that comes up. Aconite can be very important in shocking events. It could be that a lot of, I, I put up a picture of Hillary Clinton here. This is actually when she's watching. Um, when I Googled, I was looking for a picture of somebody in shock. And when I Googled shock, I, uh, one of the first pictures that came up was Hillary Clinton, who was, while she was watching um, what was happening to Osama bin Laden. Uh, this was, I guess, a famous picture uh, where she looks like. Uh, she's kind of frightened and shocked by what she's watching because they were actually watching, you know, as um, as he was, you know, they were invading his um, 
compound and all of that she was watching that and that's when that picture was taken so shocking events um, are uh, definitely indicate aconite another thing I think uh, some of the Hillary Clinton supporters as they were watching the election uh, results fully expecting their candidate to win and the kind of shock um, of of things going in fact you know a lot of the news um, the news agencies were using the word shocking because everybody was so shocked it went against the polls and everything like that so that's kind of an aconite state especially when there's a lot of fright involved um, on a physical level um, it's a great remedy for panic attacks um, feelings of terror heart palpitations there may be numbness and tingling so classic panic attack symptoms sometimes can respond well to aconite um, uh, feeling worse at midnight is also a symptom of aconite that's an aggravation time so waking up at midnight with a sudden fear it's also in terms of some other physical uh, conditions um, indicated often children need aconite especially if they've been outside playing in a dry cold wind and then they come inside and then at night they wake up with a croupy cough it's the first remedy that's indicated for croup there are three um, remedies that are the best remedies for croup and aconite is the first one when the cough is very dry the child wakes up and is in kind of a frightened state often comes on after a dry cold wind um, so um, anxiety that comes on after a strong fright so people who got very shocked from something that happened um, a vi some kind of violence or um, some or an earthquake um, you know post-traumatic stress basically and are staying in this kind of shocked state so yes aconite is very important with another thing to remember about aconite are the four F's fear fright fast and fever so it tends to come on fast in physical conditions there may be a high fever especially in children um, and it it comes on from ailments from fright and there's often a lot of fear lingering fear as well so when in fright take aconite second stage um, is Ignatia Ignatia is the remedy for grief for grief and shock um, especially after a big loss or a big disappointment so this could be um, on a personal level the loss of a loved one somebody suddenly dying it could be um, the loss of the disappointment around an election and um, feeling very shocked and disappointed and having had high expectations Ignatia often is a remedy indicated when there are very high expectations and then uh, some kind of severe disappointment afterwards um, one of the main symptoms of aconite besides the crying is a sense of a lump in the throat and a kind of spasmodic crying um, and also sighing <sighs> big long sighs um, often comes so people who end up in this state of acute grief um, there may also be muscle spasms and twitches um, and uh, even hysteria and a kind of oversensitive nervous hyper vigilant state where the nervous system is just very turned turned up and turned on and, and uh, everything is twitching and uh, over over stimulated um, so Ignatia the remedy Ignatia can help to calm those things down causticum is known in the old materia medicas as the anarchist remedy um, because um, in these days we would probably say more social activism uh, so a keynote of um, causticum is sensitivity to injustice um, to things being unfair and the kind of rage and anger that can come up when um, when things seem unfair and uh, life seems unjust um, if we want to characterize this kind of um, energy politically we would definitely associate 
this energy more with Bernie Sanders, for example, of people who um, it's known for um, a lot of symp sympathy towards people with unfortunate circumstances. So being a champion of the poor, being a champion of the oppressed, um, being intolerant of um, social injustices and um, the and the unbalanced thing about this is the anger that can come up around that um, but there's generally in causticum somebody who is sympathetic um, and who really wants things to be better and has a kind of anger um, about the status quo so um, I my practice has mostly been in Santa Cruz, and causticum is a great remedy in Santa Cruz because there's a lot of social activism, um, a lot of supporters of uh, those kind of movements, um, the 99% movement, the Occupy movement. Uh, I mean, these are not, these are examples, uh, just sort of mild examples. As I said, in the past, this was known as the anarchist remedy of people who would be, you know, just causing total anarchy in society because they wanted to bring about justice. But of course, it doesn't always go to that extreme. It can be people who are upset and disappointed um, in what's going on now. Um, uh, so certainly, you know, the events at Standing Rock, I think, are triggering a lot of these feelings for people as well uh, to see what's happening there. Um, so you can keep house to come in mind for yourself or your friends who have this kind of sensitivity to um to the un injustices and uh, the bad things that happen to others anacardium is a really interesting remedy um anacardium cardium means heart ana means lack of or no heart no, no no heart so anacardium basically means heartless in a certain way so this is a very interesting state and i'm going to describe to you how it was described to me um, how somebody becomes in an aconite uh, anacardium state um, if you can imagine i put a picture of a kind of sad looking dog here because i didn't want to put anything really violent looking and there's kind of a lot of violence and cruelty in this um, remedy so if you can imagine a dog um, who's who's beaten regularly by its master and what basically happens in terms of the psyche if you think of it in sort of psychological terms is that the dog is loyal to the master and loves the master but at the same time there's a kind of hatred because of the cruelty that it experiences and this this kind of this also happens very much in child abuse cases of um, uh, people, children who are abused by their parents in that there's a natural love there, but on the other hand, there's a big hatred. So this love-hate thing causes a split in the psyche. And in, indeed, um, people who sometimes need anacardium or who have been through very severe abuse actually develop things like what used to be called multiple personality disorder or dissociative, dissociative identity disorder, as it's called uh, these days, where the personality splits into um, pieces because you just can't kind of hold those intense feelings together in one personality. Um, the way that it's written up in the old Materia Medicas is a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the neck, on the other shoulder. So there's like this split. There's this side that's very hateful, um, can be almost like demonic, very hateful, very cruel, um, you know, can just do terrible things to others. But then there's this other side that seems kind of sweet and normal. Uh, so a very kind of psychotic split. Now, of course, anacardium, it doesn't have to be as psychotic as that. But in general, um, for people who um, feel very, um, it's a great remedy for lack of self-confidence and low self-esteem. So for people who feel underprivileged or beaten down upon and feel like they need to assert themselves in kind of a cruel way. Um, and um, the people who need this might be cruel to animals, cruel to other people, and have, um, you know, they may be in 
abusive relationships. They may be an abuser in relationships. They may fight frequently. Um, and another kind of keynote, interestingly, of anacardium is cursing. And I've seen a lot of cursing on Facebook these days <laughs> as people are kind of in some, you know, I think all of us go in and out of a lot of these different kinds of states. Whether we need a homeopathic remedy for it um, depends on whether or not we get stuck in the state for so long that it's really causing um, pathology. But certainly um, this feeling of um, uh, failure and lack of self-esteem and swearing and kind of a tendency to look for something outside of oneself um, to take it out on because there can, there's a kind of emotional numbness uh, that goes along with this as well that makes it possible to be incredibly cruel to others. So it's a pretty intense remedy. Like I said, um, it doesn't necessarily, not everybody who needs it is totally psychotic. Sometimes it's just great for people with very, very low self-esteem who have a history of abuse in the past and may appear um, very timid and mild at this point. So it doesn't necessarily mean that um, there's uh, a full, full-blown um, full-blown insanity or psychosis or something like that. Um, so, yeah, I've given this remedy successfully to many people who are very good, normal people, but they still, if you kind of go into the history or you see how they're, you know, being triggered these days, you can see that split that's going on um, and how there is the kind of this inferiority sense or... Um, this uh, dark kind of side of things. Another thing that anacardium, people who need anacardium sometimes do, and which can be very telling, is uh, they laugh at serious things. So they'll tell you a story about something that's going on in their life, and they will be laughing, even though it's something that's pretty serious and pretty awful. They will laugh at inappropriate times. So that's a little bit of a picture of the remedy anacardium. Stramonium. This is a pretty scary remedy too, and for people who are experiencing a lot of fear um, and going into terrors and even night terrors and nightmares and things like that, stramonium is a great remedy. Um, in practice, I use it a lot with children who suffer from night terrors. Um, so after feeling um, a life-threatening situation, um, feeling like your security or your um, your safety is being threatened and getting into a sense of terror can be uh, trigger a stramonium state, as I said, with nightmares, uh, not wanting to be alone, not wanting to be in the dark, um, clinging to uh, people who are nearby. The classic stramonium picture is a child who wakes up from a nightmare in the middle of the night and doesn't recognize anyone. It's, called, it's like a night terror and just wants to be held and hugged. Uh, Stramonium is just an amazing remedy in those states. I've seen many children uh, be cured very, very quickly of night terrors um, just from a few doses of Stramonium. So for those of us in society now who are feeling very fearful for our lives, some of the people who feel under threat um, through what's going on uh, politically, that you know they may be sent away or they may be registered or all the things um, that may be coming up um, in the future for some uh, people uh, that sense of fear uh, might trigger a stramonium state arsenicum uh, this is a fantastic remedy uh, for when the world feels like it's going out of control uh, arsenicum, really, the key um, idea for arsenicum is um, this sense that the world is becoming very, very chaotic and, uh, and a deep sense of insecurity and a, a wish to kind of put things back together again. Arsenicum wants to make thing, put things in order and make things right again, but it feels like the world is just out of control. And uh, there's a lot of fears in arsenicum also, a lot of free-floating anxiety, 
Um, it's a fa wonderful remedy for people who are actually in the stages of death. Um, so people who do hospice work and are helping people um, uh, go through the, the process of dying. Um, arsenicum is often very, very helpful during a very restless stage during the dying process. And many people um, get help during that time from arsenicum. Um, it is another remedy for panic attacks, especially if they come on between 12 and 2 a.m. It's a fantastic remedy for food poisoning, for traveling. Um, if you go uh, to countries where the water and the food are not similar to where you live, uh, you might take arsenicum along. It's a great remedy to take along for um, food poisoning or for when your, your system gets out of whack from eating food that you're not used to and it could cover both vomiting and diarrhea. So um, arsenicum is more probably of a long-term, it's not as much of an acute remedy in terms of fright, but it's more of a long-term uh, feeling of, you know, where is this all going? It seems so out of control. It seems like it's just spiraling into chaos. That's really the feeling um, that uh, people have when they need arsenicum and are having an a arsenicum type of panic attack. Gelsemium is an interesting remedy. Uh, often we think of gelsemium more as a flu remedy. For those of you who know a little bit about homeopathy, you may know that it's one of our best flu remedies, but it's also um, a, a remedy for um, ailments from bad news. So when something happens that you didn't want to happen um, and uh, you go into a certain kind of anxiety, which has to do with being kind of confused, dazed, trembly, weak, um, drowsy, droopy, um, eyelids droopy, everything kind of collapsing, um, diarrhea after fright, um, or this is also a great remedy for anticipatory anxiety. Um, this was this um, remedy was used. Um, during war times to treat cowardice in the battlefield. So soldiers who would, who would freak out and get diarrhea and start shaking and not want to go into battle, um, gelsemium was used for that. So that kind of um, fright about what's going to happen. These days it could be a job interview <clears throat> or it could be, you know, something that you're going to attend or going out stage fright, having to go and deliver a presentation or talk to other people, and just feeling um, this uh, trembly, weak, uh, like your mind isn't working very well. Um, so yeah, it's a fantastic remedy, as I said, not just for the flu, because it is one of our number one flu remedies, but also addressing this kind of trembling, weak anxiety that can come on um, after bad news or before, um, before some kind of event that you, ha that you feel uh, you're anticipating, what we call anticipatory anxiety. Colosynthesis is another remedy that uh, we often use in more physical conditions, but um, it can also be used in emotional states, especially when there has been anger or indignation or a sense of humiliation. So um, this, again, could definitely come up with the kind of um, social conflicts we've been having. If somebody is feeling humiliated and feels really angry about that humiliation, it could lead um, to a colosynthesis state. Um, there could be some physical cramping that comes up due to this anger that comes. The, the cramping could be abdominal cramps. Um, it's also good for headaches and it uh, is also a great remedy for menstrual cramps, especially when um, the cramps cause you to kind of bend over double as this woman is. Um, and there's a, a wish for hard pressure and heat with these kinds of cramps. So um, feeling insulted, feeling marginalized, um, feeling humiliated, uh, being feeling indignant and angry about um, how how uh, you're being treated 
And, you know, I've definitely been reading of some about some of the hate crimes and bullying um, that have been going on at a larger pace than the past. And I think remedies like colosynthesis and anacardium um, and some of these other ones as well that I've been discussing could all definitely help address uh, people's emotional issues that are going on with that. So I want to talk a little bit about how to take a homeopathic remedy now that I've described um, some of the ones that I feel might be most useful at this time. Homeopathic remedies are easily available in most health food stores. Uh, these little boron blue tubes that you can see in this picture here um, is how you will be able to get a hold of most of these. Some of them that I mentioned uh, may not be available uh, that easily right in the rack on the health food store, but probably the, you would have no problem ordering them. None of these are remedies that would be, uh, you'd have any problem ordering. So you, you could probably, if you went to like a Whole Foods or a health food store and you didn't see it and you wanted to try a remedy like this, uh, you would be able to probably order it. And, uh, and homeopathic remedies are not very expensive. I think they run, they definitely are under $10. So uh, it's kind of an economic, economical kind of medicine. What you could do if you or a loved one um, felt like you needed a remedy like this, and so some of these remedy, a remedy like this rang a bell, is you might want to take a 30C potency and just try uh, three to five pellets, one dose, and see how it goes. You don't want to repeat homeopathic remedies too often um, without knowing what they're doing for you. So I would definitely recommend just buy it and take a single dose and wait and see. And if you feel like it helps, uh, just let that be. Uh, don't take any more. But then if it stops helping and you feel like you need a, uh, to redose, that would be a time to take it again. So only repeat it if you notice that it actually helps for a while um, and then it stops helping. But do not take it routinely without a homeopath actually supervising and helping choose a remedy because we don't want to cause what's called a homeopathic proving by taking a remedy too frequently. So that would be my suggestion if any of these remedies are something you want to try uh, to get a dose of the 30C potency and just take a single dose of three to five pellets and then wait. Again, um, with homeopathy, what I'm describing here is more to do with acute emotional states that have come on uh, recently, like from around the election time or something like that. If you have been in a state intensely like this for um, more than that time, and if these are issues that date back to an earlier time in your life, which sometimes they do, then it would be really important to see a professional homeopath and get an evaluation because there are many more remedies that should be considered in, in a chronic prescription and also um, in terms of the management of the case, you may be taking a different kind of potency instead of this 30C, you may be taking it every day, you would need to do follow-up um, appointments and there are all kinds of things uh, that I'm, it would be impossible to get um, to talk about in this uh, short webinar, but um, just for you to have an idea that there are many very uh, powerful remedies for emotional trauma and that if emotional trauma is part of your history from way back then it's probably better to go ahead and get a professional evaluation rather than try to treat yourself. So I want to talk now uh, about some adaptogenic herbs that uh, everyone can take. This is, uh, these are very uh, helpful food grade herbs really um, that are almost just like eating food. In fact, you can put them in milk and that kind of thing because they're uh, just very easy to take. They taste pretty good and they don't tend to have side effects. Um, people don't tend to have side effects from them. 
Uh, so unlike the homeopathic remedies where you're going to try to take a remedy that's very specific to what you are experiencing, these herbs are good for everybody in general to help to adapt uh, to changing times. So one of my favorite um, herbs is ashwagandha, which is an Ayurvedic herb. Ashwagandha means the, um, basically the smell of the horse. <laughs> and it's actually thought to smell like the urine of a horse, although uh, to me it doesn't really smell bad. Um, it's a little bit accurate, but uh, anyway, this herb is just an amazingly wonderful herb um, in terms of its ability to both um, give a sense of groundedness and strength, but at the same time give us a relaxation. A lot of herbs that are tonic herbs can make you kind of hyper and raise your blood pressure and do things like that if you take too many of them, but ashwagandha has an incredible quality of being very grounding and very relaxing at the same time. So you can take it before bed to help you sleep, and you can take it in the morning um, to help you feel like you feel grounded and have energy. But I think kind of a main um, thing about ashwagandha is it has a very grounding quality. Uh, some of us, when we get overstimulated, get into this state of being what we would call being wired and tired at the same time, like your nervous system is kind of buzzed out and it's hard to relax, even though you're tired. And ashwagandha is great for that kind of state. Um, it really promotes serenity, rejuvenation, reduces the stress hormones in your body. Um, great for adrenal fatigue, overwork, overstimulation, nervous exhaustion, lack of sleep, um, your whole hormonal system. You can um, get this um, in powder form and just mix it with milk. You can start with maybe half a teaspoon and work your way up to a teaspoon. Like I said, it's a very mild herb. Um, I also sell it um, we have an Etsy store um, online where I make it available as, um, as an alchemical preparation, an herbal alchemical preparation. So that's another option as well. Tulsi is uh, another favorite herb of mine. Um, Tulsi is known as holy basil, and uh, Tulsi is the Ayurvedic name in um, Indian uh, culture this herb is actually considered to be like a goddess and it's grown around temples um, so it's not the same as regular basil uh, it's a special kind of basil and it has a very very refined relaxing quality um, it reduces stress enhances stamina it's an anti-inflammatory lowers cholesterol it eliminates toxins um, prevents ulcers, improves digestion, has lots of antioxidants. Um, I find it just incredibly relaxing. I drink Tulsi tea most, most of the day, <laughs> kind of all day long. In the morning I drink black tea, but then the rest of the day I usually drink Tulsi. And um, I love to combine it with other herbs. Lavender is delicious with Tulsi, so I make Tulsi lavender tea. Um, Tulsi ginger is really good, especially in the winter. I make Tulsi ginger tea. Uh, you can put rose petals in it. You can really mix it with a lot of different herbs. And uh, there is a company called Organic India, which if you go to a health food store, you'll see some of their brands, some of their, their mixes of Tulsi. You'll see Tulsi rose, Tulsi cinnamon rose, um, Tulsi ginger, Tulsi lemon ginger. I mean, they make like probably 20 different flavors. But you can also just buy the Tulsi in bulk and make it yourself. So drinking Tulsi tea, I think, is a just wonderful lifestyle habit um, for getting lots of antioxidants and um, and, and an herb that you can just uh, drink all day long as a tea to relax your nervous system. Lemon balm uh, is a Western herb and was the favorite herb of uh, the medieval alchemist Paracelsus. And uh, it's called balm because it actually is very soothing, again, to the nervous system. Um, it's a quote from Sir, uh, Paracelsus, it's sovereign for the brain, strengthens memory, and powerfully chases away melancholy. 
So it was used as um, an herb for depression um, in those days. And it's also very, very relaxing and very delicious. It's a member of the mint family and makes a delicious tea, grows very beautifully all over California. Um, I don't know about other parts of the country, but it practically grows wild. It, it sows itself, self-sows every year and beautiful patches of it. So it's very easy um, to grow yourself, at least in some climates like in California, probably anywhere where uh, you have... Um, a mild enough climate. I don't know how it does in really cold weather. But um, it's also good for colds and flu. And in general, like I said, um, it helps a disordered nervous system. And all of these actually, these three that I've mentioned, are all available um, on our Etsy store, which is called Shakti Herbal Alchemy. So if you wanted to take it as an alchemical um, uh, preparation the way that Paracelsus prepared um, alchemical remedies. Uh, I have made some of these herbs in that same process and they are available. Um, I do it as a fundraiser at, at an Etsy store. So that's another way or you can just drink it drink them as teas especially the lemon balm and the holy basil. So uh, I wanted to just go over some nutritional tips as well because when we're feeling stressed and upset, we sometimes forget to take care of ourselves, but actually that's the time when it's most important to really be careful about what we're putting in our body. Probably the most important thing and one of the hardest things is uh, to avoid simple carbohydrates such as white flour and sugar. Um, now, of course, when we're stressed, we sometimes what we want to do is eat a bunch of chips or candy bar or something like that, you know, to kind of calm ourselves down. But actually, eating sugar and eating simple carbohydrates um, puts our body into flight or fight response. It basically stimulates the adrenal glands and makes us feel even more um, hypervigilant and uh, does the opposite of what we need. So as much as possible, avoid those kinds of foods when you're feeling stressed. Um, instead, it's better to eat the healthy fats and oils, which do not provoke an insulin response. Um, they go through a different pathway in terms of how they're digested. Some a fat like coconut oil has the medium chain fatty acids, which uh, can give you a lot of energy without raising your blood sugar levels. So that's why coconut oil can be such a great um, food, but really any kind of natural oil, including butter, avocado, uh, and as I said, coconut oil, olive oil, as long as it's not heated up too hot, too high, but natural oils, of course, you want to avoid um, oils such as canola oil and corn oil and uh, the more commercial oils that have been highly refined and are really don't have any health benefits left. So butter is great uh, if you can get a good kind of butter. The one that's easy to get these days and is really high quality is Kerrygold butter. You can get it at Trader Joe's and in most health food stores and even in some supermarkets now. So a high quality butter is really worth, uh, worth the investment in terms of what it can do for your body. Fermented foods such as raw sauerkraut, um, miso, yogurt, they have more vitamins and more enzymes than non-fermented foods and they also help you with your digestion. So in all traditional cultures there were different kinds of fermented foods depending on the culture and we really need to bring fermented foods back into our diet. Another quick tip is just to eat some protein and fat um, every couple of hours to keep uh, your blood sugar levels steady and uh, to keep from going into flight or fight by uh, kind of starving yourself. That's not a good idea when you're stressed. So nuts and cheese are good foods for that. They have protein and fat. Eggs are also very good uh, for the same reason. So foods that have protein and fat in them and having snacks, you know, on a few nuts or a little piece of cheese to kind of keep your blood sugar levels um, even 
uh, sometimes it said mood follows blood sugar. So you don't want to be, you know, eating sugar and having, you know, this big swing up and then a big swing down. You want to try to keep your blood sugar level steady by eating um, uh, more complex carbohydrates that have fiber, such as whole grains, if you're going to be eating carbs, and then eating good amounts of protein and fat. And finally, um, to remember the kind of spiritual side, depending on your faith, um, it's very important to uh, give space and time and focus to prayer or meditation practices uh, to really bring yourself the internal state, bring your, your internal state into a place of serenity and peace and kindness and compassion. Uh, we all need to do this work for ourselves because we really can't change the outer world all that much. The world that we can change is our own internal world, and that's really what our focus needs to be. So I would encourage everybody at this time to do everything they can uh, to cultivate love, compassion, inner peace, kindness, um, and goodness internally uh, as we face things uh, in the future as we face this kind of uncertain future. Uh, I, there is a program, uh, as you probably all know, I'm, I teach a, and direct a professional program in homeopathy, but I also direct another program uh, called the Vitalism Program, which uh, is based on the work of Paracelsus, who was a, an alchemist, um, a medieval alchemist who was a predecessor to uh, Hahnemann and homeopathy, but I also teach uh, spiritual practices and astrology in this program. And the website for that is here, vitalism.us. Um, so if you are interested in exploring sort of the spiritual side of being a healer, you're welcome to take a look at that uh, website. And the program is... Uh, similar to the Caduceus program in that you can start any time and work through it at your own pace, but it's not so much of um, uh, an information. I mean, there is information in the program, but it's more focused on, um, on personal growth and uh, meditation and sort of the qualities of being a healer. So thank you all for joining me. Um, I wanted to just check in and see if um, anybody would like to ask a question now. I'm going to unmute those of you who are here and just see if anybody has a question. Any, does anybody have a question? Yeah, I wanted you to repeat the Repeat the what? <laughs> Wait, I'm I'm having trouble hearing. Uh, hold on. Who who had a question? Me, Monique. Hi, Monique. What was your question? I wanted you to rewrite the first six names of the homeopathic because I was listening but I wasn't looking. So I know you had them written on top of the screen, but I didn't write them down. <laughs> oh well, you can watch the uh, you can watch the recording later. Oh, I can. Yeah, yeah, we'll have that okay. available. So, any other questions? No. And then, where do we buy these products from you? Well, the homeopathic remedies you can get in health food stores, um, and the the herbal teas that I recommended you can also get in health food stores. So. Uh, you, you, I can, I do have some um, uh, elixirs available of the last ones that I mentioned, but okay. uh, you I do take ashwash, ashwagandha. Ada, yes, great. Yeah. I take that, and I take milk thistle with oh god, all these weird names. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Kind of well, thank you all for. Thank you all for. Uh, joining me and i hope this information i hope this information was useful to you Very. and uh yeah feel free if you have any questions about any of it you can always email me and we can talk about it that way willa can i ask you a question 
Sure. Um, where does nat myrrh come in as a grief remedy? Uh, nat natrium muriaticum is more for long-term grief. Um, one of the keynotes of natrium muriaticum is dwelling on past disagreeable appearance, uh, uh, occurrences. So uh, in terms of our discussion right now, where we're talking more about acute grief um, based on pat the events of the last uh, few weeks, then we wouldn't really be talking about nature muriaticum yet because it's not really a long-term thing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so thanks again for joining me, and uh, I wish everybody well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.